Do pilots fly the plane anymore? Does the autopilot do all the work? And do we even need pilots anymore? What do we do? So we'll find out today. Hi everyone, I'm Captain Mark, and today we're going to be talking about autopilots. So what is an autopilot? Well, the autopilot will fly the aircraft for us. You've got cruise control in your car, you've still got to be there to watch it. We've still got to be there to watch the autopilot. The airlines like us using the autopilot. It flies the plane more accurately at we, than we can. It burns less fuel, so the airlines like us to use it. Above 29,000 feet or flight level 290, you're in an airspace called Reduce Vertical Separation Minimal, or RVSM, and an autopilot must be used. So it's not just a case of pressing a button. The autopilot has to be told what to do. A pilot's day, normally we turn up at the airport, we report well before departure time. We have on our iPads the flight plan for that flight or multiple flight plans for the day. We have to check the weathers, we have to check the notices on the airports, what runways are open, what runways are closed, are navigation beacons working, is there restricted areas, dangerous areas, is there things that we can't fly near? And then we will plan our flight, we will plan our fuel load, and then the day can get going. On every flight, we have at least two pilots. One will be pilot flying, who will be actually physically flying the aircraft. And the other one will be known as pilot monitoring. It used to be called pilot not flying, but now it's pilot monitoring because they're always monitoring the other pilots. Pilot monitoring will do the walk around the aircraft. They will walk around the aircraft and physically inspect the exterior of the aircraft. They'll check the tire depths, they'll check the probes and sensors, they'll check the engines, they'll make sure there's no new dents or damage to the aircraft in any way, shape or form, and check that there's no leaks from the fuel tanks or from any of the hydraulic lines. Pilot flying will be on board the flight deck. They will be setting the aircraft up. They will be programming the flight management system they will be setting up any radio aids needed and doing the scans of the overhead panels and the center console and setting your own screens up for departure. The first officer returns, they will do the security check inside the cockpit and then we will both do the load sheet with the amount of passengers and bags on board We'll work out the trim where the aircraft weight and balance is and how heavy it is and then we'll both work out our takeoff performance. We very rarely use full power for takeoff, so we reduce the power to save the wear on the engines, and it's a bit quieter as well. It can burn more fuel, but it's what the airlines like us to do. So we'll work out our takeoff performance and work out what speeds we will actually take off at. When this is done, pilot flying will brief how he's going to do this departure, the taxi routes, the departure routing, levels we're gonna stop at, any threats and how we're going to mitigate them. Once that's done, we will run a variety of checklists. We will get clearance from air traffic control and we will push back, start the engines and taxi out to the runway. On the taxi out, we may do single engine taxi to save fuel. We'll start the second engine. We'll run the after start checklist and then we'll check our flight controls are working as they should be. We'll run the taxi checklist and then it's time to do the takeoff. More checklists to do, we need to tell air traffic what we're doing. We line up on the runway and we do the takeoff. We have to do the takeoff. The autopilot doesn't do that for us yet. So normally I will fly the aircraft up to just over maybe a thousand feet, wait until we've reduced the power and the nose has lowered and we're starting to accelerate the aircraft. You can use the autopilot from five seconds or 100 feet after departure. If it's really windy or really rough or there's wind shear forecast, I would tend to put the autopilot in early. Air traffic normally intervene and give you headings to fly to get you out of the way of other traffic and improve separation. They will then give you different levels to climb to. You will then change frequency on route. And all the radio calls will be done by the pilot monitoring. The pilot flying will be monitoring the aircraft and making inputs into the flight control unit, which tells the autopilot what you want it to do. Soon after takeoff, if you're told to go direct to a point, it's probably better to get pilot monitoring to enter that information into the McDo and the FMGC to make the aircraft do it. But once you're a bit higher, you've now got the capacity where you can do it yourself. Pilot flying will be monitoring the, the aircraft, monitoring the aircraft systems and making sure it's doing what you expect it to do. It'll also be checking what level you're at and what optimum level you need to be at. 
Pilot Monitory will be talking to air traffic control. They will be running the flight log. They will be doing fuel checks at all the waypoints, making sure that you've got sufficient fuel to complete your journey and you haven't got any leaks. And they'll be printing off weather and information for different airports. In the meantime, you'll all be planning the what ifs. You'll be sitting there looking at the weathers and coming up with a plan that if you need to divert for say a sick passenger, you know straight away where you're gonna go. Pilot flying may at some point give control to the aircraft to pilot monitoring if they need to go out to use the little boys room or if they wanna do a public address to the passengers and tell them where they are or give them some facts and figures or some information about the flight. But then we come to the descent. You would set the aircraft up with this scent, you'd program the flight management computer, set up any nav angles that you need to set up, set the auto brake set in, and then you would brief how are you going to do this, what threats are involved. So you're going into Antalya where there's lots of high ground, you need to brief how you would mitigate this. We have charts to look at, you have terrain awareness systems on your navigation displays. It's also a good idea to brief your mental model of how you are going to fly this approach. At what distances are you going to take flaps one, flaps two? At what distance are you going to drop the gear? What brake settings are you going to use? What turn off of the runway you're planning to use? And if you also brief the go around procedure, should you have to do a go around? So the landing, do we do it or does the autopilot do it? For the vast majority of the time, we do the landing because we need the practice. If it's really, really foggy and we can't see to land, then the autopilot will do the landing and it does a perfectly good job of it. The lowest that we can use the autopilot if we're doing a manual landing is 160 feet. And if it's a storm or a really windy day, then I will use it down to 160 feet. I will brief it that if it's doing something wacky at 300 feet and pointing out here it is, I'll take it out and sort it out. But for the vast majority of very, very windy landings in the storms, I will let, leave the autopilot in. So once you've landed, we've got the taxi in, pilot monitoring will have his after landing scans and flows to do, retracting the flaps, turning the traffic collision avoidance systems off, probably putting the brake fans on and starting the auxiliary power unit so we've got electrics and air conditioning on the ground. Once you've stopped on the stand, shut the engines down, you say to to the passengers and then you can plan for the return flight to get yourself back home and do it all again. We also have a thing called auto thrust. It's like your cruise control in your car, it maintains a speed. The auto thrust is armed at the beginning of the takeoff roll and then when you reduce the thrust levers on the Airbus to the climb position, the auto thrust becomes active and it's announced on your primary flight display and we would use the auto thrust normally all the way to landing. When you close the thrust levers, that will then disengage the auto thrust. So that's a basic overview of the autopilots. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you on the next one soon.